There is no question Jennifer Hudson was actively involved with Daniel Perez, also known as Lou Castro and his group of friends. Neighbors say Hudson was brainwashed and that is what led to her untimely death. From all accounts, somewhat mysterious. Nobody really knows what or how or why that occurred on that day. That day was September 21st, 2008. Real estate agent Jennifer Hudson was driving her 2007 Chevy Tahoe east on 21st Street in Butler County. Former Butler County Sheriff Craig Murphy investigated. He says Hudson crossed the center line, hitting a gravel truck head on. The line of sight bothered me because I start thinking, if there wasn't illness, something like that, a distraction of some sort. There shouldn't have been any reason for this collision. These photos show the damage to the SUV. Hudson was pronounced dead at the scene. The crash was ruled an accident. But was it really just an accident? Usually you come up with something that makes some sense. And this one is absolutely not making sense to me. What else doesn't make sense to Murphy? The driver of that gravel truck that Hudson struck lived just a quarter mile north of Hudson's home on North Oliver near Valley Center. Hudson's house is in a cluster of three homes, neighbors called a compound. By all accounts, Daniel Perez was in charge here, a man who always had lots of money, hosted huge parties and bought everyone living here very expensive cars. Gene Gray now lives in Perez's home. He shows us the sidewalk in front of the house. You can see where the words Angels Landing are scratched in the concrete. Three names appear, including the name Lou. It's been surreal for us to really just to learn each day what, what has transpired with this individual, this Perez individual for several years, you know, decades really. Um, and to know that it all took place here. The bizarre chain of events began in 2001, hundreds of miles away in South Dakota. A plane crash killed Mona Griffith, a friend of Perez. Her obituary lists his alias, Lou Castro, as her surviving brother. But a relative tells us he was no relation. The NTSB ruled the crash an accident. The investigator tells Cake News when a small plane goes down, the first thing he looks for is the possibility of carbon monoxide poisoning in the cabin. The best way to test for that is a blood test. But by the time investigators found the wreckage nearly six weeks after it went down, it was too late. The report saying the heater to the cabin was malfunctioning a few weeks before the crash, but it was fixed before that fateful day. The NTSB sent the heater away for a special inspection, but there was no way to tell if it had been tampered with because of damage caused by the crash. In 2003, Patricia Hughes, a friend of Perez and Griffith, drowned in the pool on the property. Her death then ruled an accident. According to Hughes' autopsy, she suffered a head injury and a bleed on the brain. When she died, $1.2 million was left to her husband, Brian Hughes. The money he received went into an account controlled by Jennifer Hudson and another woman who lived on the so-called compound. Three years later, Brian Hughes died when a car fell on him in South Dakota. Investigators there tell Cake News as far as they can remember, Perez was not in South Dakota when Brian Hughes died, and they have no reason to believe his death was anything but accidental. There Murphy says investigators at one point seriously considered Hudson's death a suicide, but ruled it out. Now that Perez is charged in Patricia Hughes' murder, Murphy is rethinking the case, wondering if Perez had that kind of control over Hudson. I'm trying to put together what could have gone wrong. Hudson's husband still lives in that home near Valley Center. He tells us he cannot talk about this case until the investigation is concluded.